Hello, welcome to the Jay Harner Illustration channel. I'm Jay Harner, I'm pro illustrator. I mainly do comic books, and but I also do a few other things that uh, we're not allowed to mention on here because, you know, FBI and whatnot. It's just a joke, by the way. Um, so this episode is all about character design and what 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 we can bring to the table as illustrators for our books if you're creating a comic book character that is this character that i'm drawing here is a character from my book altered state uh took a bit of time to come up with the actual design been working on it since 2009 ish it used to go under a different name joint project with a a writer that i know called joe berry i'll put the link to his channel in the description uh, he makes music now. Um, so it was originally a very cut and copy superhero um, story. But what it's become over time is very political with our current times and everything like that. And I felt I needed a character that defined that with the new direction we were going. So what I did was I looked at a few inspirations from other places, which you can too. If you look at the creator character, look everywhere for your inspirations. Look at manga, look at TV and film, look at comics, look at wrestling, look at theatre. Look, look where you can. I mean, when I was designing the actual look of this guy right here, I was I was watching a lot of wrestling. So I was uh, designed and based on the look of AJ Styles. And because I'm a huge comics mark, I also designed him from the look of the Red Hood from the Batman comics and then I created this 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 character this character that's a little bit different and that's what he's meant to represent um, yeah I, I didn't want to go with the hugely muscled massive six foot seven characters so I created him quite slim line I recommend you you always think about what you want your character to look like because you want you want it to be different, you know. You don't want these nineties muscular, huge Rob Layfield behemoths all the time. Use it where you can. So that's why I went with that way. Um, I'm using Sketchbook Pro at the moment to create this with my Wacom Intuos Pro tablet. Really recommend getting that bit of kit if you can. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper than Wacom Cintiq line. It takes a little bit getting used to looking at the the way the page is on the screen. Oh, I've got a tweet. Oh, sorry about that. But, oh, and another one. But it's, where was I? Shit. Oh yeah, it's, you, there's a certain disconnect between looking at the screen and looking at your tablet you know where you're drawn so with the Wacom Intuos it does take a little bit of time getting used to that but once you've gotten the hang of it it's actually pretty easy and it's so good you know I did have a cheaper graphics tablet back in the day and I could do a little bit of work on that but this right here I'm gesturing towards it I know there's no vision on that but anyway this is a great thing to buy a great thing to invest in and as your as your illustration career takes off you could probably invest in things like Cintiqs and stuff like that if you if you really want to I mean I'm always looking at new ways to uh, to make my artwork quicker that's the whole reason I went to digital in the first place but you can do these designs with you know pen and paper if you really want to but it doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not telling you there's any best way to do it. This is just my way of doing it. That's all it is. I like to be very messy when I'm creating characters. So as you can see with the blue lines underneath there, lots and lots and lots of just scribbling and thick lines and everything like that because you can neaten it up with the inks, you know, and then you delete that layer when you're done. E easy enough, easy enough. And this, this bit of work itself is going nowhere. It's just to get the idea out there, get it on screen in this case, and reference it when necessary when you actually come to creating your comic book. That's all that is. 
you know, I, I, I had a little bit of thing about putting a superhero in a jacket. I, do, I don't know what it is. No idea. I think it's, it might be like some deep-seated psychological fetish problems. I don't know, but we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll have to look into it someday. You know, in a brothel, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> what you'll find with a program like Sketchbook Pro is that you've got so many different ways to ink your project, which is what I'm doing right here. You can, you've got, you've got like actual paint brushes that you can use to ink it if you so wish to do it that way. You've got fine liner pens. I mean, I'm using sort of um, calligraphy pen tool here to to do to do mine. I've never when I was traditional, I never used a calligraphy pen, pen to ink, but it's it seems to work a lot better on digital for me, uh, at least you know. So that's where we're going with this. Lots of black shade in there. Always get your depth. Always. It's like in um, the film Chase and Amy, where you got Jason Lee's character saying, um, being accused of being a tracer, and he's just going, "My, when I add ink to the image, it adds depth." And then, of course, you know he gets kicked out, but mm, whatever. Small details can make a big difference to what you're doing as well. Like you see there, all I did was add a few lines. And right there, I had a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a scratch on the actual belt, just to, just to make it look a bit more three D. Of course, these are just, these are just character designs. Really, you don't have to go that in depth with it. But once you once you start doing it, you really never get out of the way of doing it. Sorry, it's all in time lapse, by the way. I would have done a full length video just as natural, but it would have taken about 35 minutes, and who really has that much time to watch an art video or any video now? I know my attention span is very, very limited these days, and I guess that's just part of living in this century, isn't it? Adding a bit more shade in there. Again, it really affects your depth. When you look at conceptual books, like um, from TV and film, you'll always get these these lines of shading, just because it adds more depth and it looks more impressive to do so. But that was character design and one hundred and one, essentially. Um, as far as the first video goes, I think I did an okay job. Maybe. I don't know. Gonna do a few more in the future. Gonna look at colour and techniques. That one will be... It will not be a time-lapse one. Because we need that fully. But I'm gonna finish up this video. And let you get on your way. Thank you for listening. Comment, subscribe. Um, and hit that thumbs up. Till next time then. Bye.